Ballot boxes in Portland, Oregon, and Vancouver, Washington were set on fire early Monday, and we're learning more about what was written on the incendiary devices used. Sources familiar with the ongoing investigation say each device used Monday carried the slogan, Free Gaza. But one source said it's unclear whether these markings reflect the views of a pro-Palestinian activist or if it was an individual trying to manipulate existing divisions here in the U.S. Little damage was done to the ballots in Oregon, but officials said that hundreds of ballots are believed to have been damaged in Washington. It is a symbol of American democracy, talking about the polling place. But in the past decade, more than 25,000 have vanished. And in states like Georgia, where 94 percent of voters use polling precincts, shunning other forms of absentee and mail-in voting, the closures of these polling stations have impacted voters in a real way. Our Steve Sansami reports. On this right here, everyone in rural East Georgia can agree that this just might be the most glorious sunset in the world and that their lake is a canvas for the skies. Where they're having trouble these days is with the upcoming election and the closing of places where they've been voting for years. The thing about it is why disenfranchise anybody? Why close any polls? If we should be doing things right, we would be making sure that every person had a right to vote. To God be the glory. Reverend Denise One Freeman is a Baptist preacher help. with righteousness in her voice. We love him. All my help comes from the Lord. I don't depend on me. She'll tell you it's no surprise that when you take a close look at the numbers as we have, you'll find that more than 20% of American polling places have closed in the last decade. Morning. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Pastor Freeman says that with God's help, she's now leading the charge against the people in this deep red county who run the elections, who she claims are working harder than ever to keep black people from voting by closing polls. People don't understand the hardship that they put good people in when they make stupid, unnecessary changes in policy just so they can say, I got my way, I disenfranchised them. And she says that here's proof. After the 2020 presidential election that the blue team won, the powers here that be closed this polling precinct that's now collecting weeds and dust and closed this one at the old Tabernacle Baptist Church, and another here. And this is who closed them all. All these news agencies, they were calling me. And they would say, are you black? And when I told them that I was, they were surprised. Lavender Bolton is the director of elections in Lincoln County. And before all this, she and Reverend Freeman were old friends. So you went from how many? Seven. In 2020 mm -hmm. to how many today? Three. Three. And on a good year, presidential year, we might have 4,000 people to come out. Sometimes I would have a staff sitting there all day and one person come to vote. It was just no need for those many polling places. Were people approaching you in the street? Yes. And they were all just really mad because, oh, you just don't want black people to vote. And this is coming from black folks? Yes. Did this hurt you? It did. Yep. Because these were people that, you know, I thought I knew, but um, come to find out, they were totally different. The struggle here is the same fight over voting places across America. And depending on who you ask, the reasons for closing these polls are either justifiable or cruel, financial or political. Jurisdictions have a lot of reasons, and often they come down to money and efficiency, absolutely. But it's also true that when you know these decisions get made, we don't often get an explanation for why. Our ABC News and OWN Station's data team took a hard look at the numbers and found that more than 27,000 American polling places closed between 2010 and 2022. 
and that the reasons weren't necessarily about color, but the impacts sometimes were. In Missouri, for example, some of the most diverse counties in the state, like St. Louis, have seen the largest declines. In Ohio, the counties with the largest declines in polling places are among the poorest counties. And our local stations across America are reporting that some voters are having a harder time getting to their new voting places. And for the people who live in the far corners of the city, how are they going to get there? We don't have buses. Claudia Zimmerman is a 76-year-old retired librarian in Cleveland, Ohio. She told our ABC affiliate there that she used to walk to her voting place before it closed. Now she needs to drive to a new one that serves more people. We just didn't want to drive that far if we didn't have to, and so we have started voting by mail. We did find that states where more people were voting by mail closed the most polls, but something else becomes clear when you see the numbers. We found that the closings of American polling places sped up in 2013 after the U.S. Supreme Court struck down key parts of the Voting Rights Act. President Johnson addresses a joint session of Congress to push a voting rights bill aimed at ending discrimination. A law born from the civil rights struggle on America's streets. Polling places were swapped by both Negro and white voters, some of whom stood in line for up to four hours. When the law changed, counties that used to need approval from federal civil rights offices to close a polling place started closing them when they wanted. And one of those counties, just east of Atlanta, was Warren, Georgia. There were four voting machines all placed on this wall. Wanda Jenkins used to vote at this Warren County fire station near her home. She now has to drive 12 miles. The voters here are majority black and brown, and they went from six polling places to just one less than a year after the 2013 Supreme Court decision. And a lot of people feel strongly that this was done on purpose. Yes. Yeah, to stop black folks from voting. Yes, I think it would have been a disadvantage more so for that group of people than any other. Right after they closed the polls, voter turnout across Warren County fell by 12%. But county leaders insist they weren't targeting anyone. Jesse Lee Hansen says no matter the reasons, it's not fair. In Jesus' name, amen. After two strokes and a heart attack, he's asked his pastor to come get him on election day and drive him the now 12 miles to vote. Me, personally, I don't understand it. You know, I did have a little faith in, in politics, but I don't have no faith in politics now, no one. Mm -hmm can't be trusted. There's a study that finds that when the distance to a voting place grows by even a quarter of a mile, up to 5% of voters stop going to the polls. Where there are people who are in rural areas where transportation isn't plentiful, it creates fewer opportunities for people to be able to cast ballots. We have a better democracy where more people engage, and we should have policies that match that intention. This is not just hurting poor and black people. This is hurting working people as well. You got to drive a distance unless you live in right in the area where the polling place is. Over in Lowndes County, Alabama, 66-year-old Perman Hardy is behind the wheel trying to save the day, driving people to vote. And on election day, I'm up about 5.30, grab me a bite to eat. So you have a route? I have a route. We still have people that still work on the other people's farm now that say, oh, I, ain't, I can't get off. I go out on that farm and pick them up on their lunch break. You got to stop to eat. So why not come go with me and let's go eat on our way to the pole? I'll bring you back. There's a lot of excuses, but I don't take excuses. This daughter of a sharecropper drives a worn down truck with more than 350,000 miles and a check engine light flashing. So how long is this car going to last you? I don't know, but I'm going to continue going. Till the wheels fall off. Till the wheels fall off. Reverend Freeman in Lincoln County says she won't stop fighting to keep polls open and worries that her old friend is closing them to make someone else happy. The Bible said truth. I've known her for a while. I just don't believe this is something she came up with at all. And I would say this to her face and have. 
Lavender Bolton says it's not at all true that her county commissioners, while white Republicans, are pressuring her to do this. And one of them told us firmly that no one is trying to suppress voters of any color. She still says that if it was up to just her, she would close two more polls, leaving her county with one, which she says is enough. We have more white voters than we do black. So all of the closings, it pretty much affected them, the whites, more than it did the blacks. Let me just put it this way. You have people questioning your blackness. Yes. I would never try to stop black people from voting. I would never try to stop anybody. The argument here over polls is personal. But on this, they'll always agree that when the sun sets here on election day, the lake will look as glorious as ever. Thanks to Steve Olson, Sami, as always. As for Herman Hardy, the woman who's been driving Alabamans to the polls for the past 30 years, she tells us she's getting her truck cleaned and ready to head out 5.30 a.m. on Election Day. She typically drives up to 50 voters, and she expects this election year will be no different.